Hello boys and girls, welcome back to Kids Church. I'm so excited to talk to you guys again today. As you can see, I am outside in a tree house. I'm up at the top in the upper part of it and I am enjoying watching the sunset. So I've got my sunglasses on so I don't get blinded by the sun in my eyes. I wonder what you guys have been up to. Maybe you've been enjoying going back to school, seeing your friends, seeing your teacher again, being able to play in the playground. With all this good weather we've been having, maybe you've been getting out, maybe you're riding your bikes or your skateboards, your hoverboards, your scooters, going on walks, going to discover things in the park. I don't know, I have been going out on my bike. Today is actually day seven that I've been out. Seven days in a row I've been on a bike ride and I've been really enjoying it. I have been enjoying soaking up the sunshine and also just looking at creation all around me. Since it's spring, everything's starting to come to life. Green leaves everywhere, we've got flowers blossoming, we've got colour, you can hear the animals. I go past some fields sometimes and I see some little baby animals that have just been born. In fact, if you listen really carefully now, you can probably hear the birds talking to each other. Do you hear them? Oh, they're so cool. I sometimes wonder what they're saying to each other. Like maybe they're saying, who is that weird girl sitting in that treehouse talking to her phone? Or maybe they are talking about how beautiful the sunset is because it really is stunning tonight. Spring reminds me of the Bible. Actually, it reminds me of when Jesus rose from the dead that we celebrated a couple of weeks ago at Easter. Whenever he burst out of the grave, defeating death, came back to life, and then, as Zara told us last week, he spent some time talking to other people. He went and had breakfast with them on the beach. He talked to his disciples. He appeared to many, many people for about 40 days, actually. And that is pretty cool to me because I love in spring when everything starts to come back to life again. Winter, everything's kind of like gray and there's no leaves on the trees. It looks a bit dead everywhere. And I do love winter too. But then in spring, there's just so such excitement, so much, I don't know, brightness about the place. And I really, really enjoy it. And it always reminds me of the Easter story. And today we're actually going to look at what happened after that. So like Zara said last week, um, Jesus appeared to his disciples and he talked to them. He appeared to many people. And last week, Zara told us about how he talked to Peter. But we're going to see what happened a little bit after that. And we're going to go to the book of Acts. Now, Acts in the Bible is a book that is about after Jesus goes back to heaven, which that's the story for today. And then what happened after the acts that people did afterwards. So let's take a look. During the 40 days after Jesus had died and risen from the dead, he appeared to many people and he showed them that he was actually alive again. He talked to them about the kingdom of God. And once when he was eating with them, he said, don't leave Jerusalem until my father sends you the gift that he's promised, as I told you. John baptized you with water, but in a few days, you'll be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So when the apostles were with Jesus, they kept asking him, Lord, has the time come for you to free us and restore your kingdom? Is it time yet for the gift? He replied, the father alone knows when those times and dates are. These aren't for you to know, but you will receive the power of the Holy Spirit when he comes and you will be my witnesses. You'll tell people all about me everywhere, Jerusalem and to the ends of the earth. After saying this, he was taken up into a cloud while they were watching. They could no longer see him. They strained their eyes as he was raised into heaven Two white robed men suddenly stood beside them and said, Why are you standing here staring up into the heavens? Jesus has been taken back to heaven, but someday he will return the same way that he left. Snap! Jesus just rose up on the clouds into heaven. Can you imagine what the disciples must have looked like? Standing there, looking up into the sky. Maybe they didn't have sunglasses and so they were getting blinded by the sun just staring there, watching an empty sky, wondering where he'd gone, wondering what had happened. And then these men come and they're like, hey, why are you looking up in the sky? Jesus has gone back to heaven, just like he told you. 
gone. Just like that. Just click, Jesus, snap, he's away to heaven. Up on the clouds. It wasn't like, I don't know, a really long car journey or a really long aeroplane ride. He just went up in the clouds back to heaven. Well, do you know, I wonder if you can snap. You wanna try it? If you put your middle finger together with your thumb and go, can you hear that? Push them together really tight and then just push them past each other. Maybe you can try and learn how to do that this week. I always loved trying to click. Well, snap. Snap is really important in this story because not only did Jesus just up into heaven, off he went, but it teaches us something from this story. So snap is spelt S-N-A-P. So let's take a look. Each letter can remind us of something from this story. So let's start. S. S stands for Son of God. Jesus was the Son of God. And before he went back to heaven, he told people about his father about the fact that his father had a kingdom, a plan, a kingdom where we could be with him. And you see, he taught them about this. He taught them about God's kingdom because he was God's son. And he told them to go and tell people everywhere about him, the fact that he was alive, to go and tell people about the son of God. So S is for son of God. Now, after the S comes N, and N is kind of important. You see, it's for need. We need the Holy Spirit. Jesus had promised that the Holy Spirit was going to come. And if we look back into the book of John, chapter 16, verse 7, it says, In fact, it's better for me to go away, because if I don't, the helper won't come. But if I do go away, then he will send them to you. So Jesus needed to go back to heaven to be with God, because he was the son of God but also he needed to go back into heaven so that the Holy Spirit would come. And we need the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit does an awful lot in our hearts and in our lives. He helps us to tell other people about Jesus. He helps us whenever we're feeling sad. He helps us whenever we need courage, whenever we need strength. The Holy Spirit does an awful lot of things. And I'm sure if you ask your mom and dad, they can tell you a lot of them from the Bible. Maybe you wanna look through some of them this week, but there's a lot of things in there. And we need the Holy Spirit, which Jesus had promised he would send after he went back to heaven. So S was for the Son of God. M was for need. And A, it's a really fancy word. It's for anticipation. Anticipation is a fancy, 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 fancy word for hope or excitement. Did you know this at the end of the Bible story? It said that he was going to come back again? Jesus is coming back? I am super excited for that. I, oh, if Jesus came right now, I would, ah, I'd just scream. I'd be so excited. But Jesus is coming back. And that's a really, really, really exciting thing and a really happy thing. And I can hope and be excited about it. And that gives me anticipation. Have you ever been given a gift? And you're so, so excited to open it, but it's not your birthday yet, or it's not Christmas yet. And you're sitting holding it and you're like, oh, I'm real excited. Oh, I just want to open it. What is it? What is it? What is it? And then maybe you open it and it's something that needs built or something really cool. And you're like, oh, I've got to wait. Or maybe you don't have batteries and you've got to wait to get the batteries so that you can use your new toy. It's, oh, you're so excited. That excitement is what we should have when we think about Jesus returning. Excitement and anticipation. We're waiting for him to come back. We're longing for him to come back. But it also links into what Jesus commanded us to do last week with Zara, to tell other people about him, the fact that he is the son of God and the fact that the Holy Spirit can help us because we need the Holy Spirit to help us to tell other people about Jesus. We want to tell them because we want to share that excitement. We want to share the hope, the anticipation with other people. So let's see if we can remember so far. S was for the Son of God. N was for needed. A was that big word, anticipation. And then P. P is for prepare a place. 
You might remember Jesus told a story back in John about how he was going to go away so that he could prepare a place in the Father's house for you. It said, in my Father's house there are many rooms. If it were not so, I would not have told you. And I am going to prepare a place for you. Jesus has a place for us in the kingdom of God. We belong there as part of God's family and that is super exciting. And it's part of the reason Jesus needed to go. He was going to prepare a place, going to go back to heaven, to be with God, to be with the Father, so that he could prepare a place for us. And it's super, super exciting because that place is a place where we can be with Jesus. We can be with God, no longer separated by our sin. And that's a really good thing. Another thing to anticipate, to look forward to, the place that God has for us in his kingdom with him. So let's see if we can remember all of that. Maybe you've been practicing your snapping. Mine has apparently got a bit rubbish over this video, but we'll try again. So S is for son of God. N is for needed. A is for anticipation. And P is for a place, preparing a place for you. Now, you might have noticed in the story, Jesus said that he was going to send the Holy Spirit and he told the disciples to go and wait in Jerusalem. They had to go there, they had to wait there. So let's see what happened. I wonder how long they were waiting for him. Let's take a look. On the day of Pentecost, that's the Jewish festival of giving gifts, all of the apostles were together in the upper room when suddenly there was a sound from heaven like a rushing wind, like a giant windstorm. And then what well, looked like flames of fire appeared above their heads. Everyone was filled with the Holy Spirit and they began to speak in different languages. The Holy Spirit was giving them this ability. Because it was Pentecost, there were a lot of people in the city of Jerusalem from a lot of different places. And when they heard a loud noise, everyone came running. They were amazed to hear their own languages being spoken. How can this be? They exclaimed. These people are from Galilee, and yet they're talking in our own languages, all of our own languages. And we can hear these people telling the wonderful things that God has done. Whoa, I bet they weren't expecting that. They weren't expecting fire, wind, different languages, when Jesus said he was sending a gift, I don't think they were thinking it was going to be like this. Must have been pretty scary. Can you imagine you're sitting in an upper room with your friends, you're just waiting because that's what Jesus has told you to do. And then there's this big wind that comes, then it looks like flames of fire above everybody's head. Then everybody is speaking in a different language. What? Can you imagine if you went into school tomorrow? and you started speaking in different languages too. That would be pretty cool, but you definitely wouldn't be expecting to do that unless you're very good at speaking in different languages, which I am very much not good at. But the Holy Spirit came, just like Jesus has said. He had told them that the Holy Spirit would be coming, and here he was with them, helping them to tell people about God and about the Son of God and God's kingdom. Amazing! I wonder if it reminds you of anywhere else in the Bible. Maybe in the Old Testament, there was a fire, there was a guy who had to take his shoes off, um, he had to go and talk to Pharaoh and say, let bright people go. I wonder if you can remember what story I'm talking about. That's right, it was Moses. So Moses was out looking after some sheep. He had run away from Egypt and God came in fire to a flaming bush and spoke to him and told him that he needed to go back to Egypt, that he needed to talk to Pharaoh, and that it was going to be part of God's rescue plan for his people, that he was going to free them from Egypt, take them to the promised land, and that there they would have a much better life than they had in Egypt, that they would be able to worship God. But he spoke to him in a flame, and then Moses went off and started to do the things that were asked of him. Eventually, you might remember the story, Pharaoh did let the people go. They did go on a really long journey and they did end up in the promised land. But that wasn't forever. 
it wasn't like the flame was always there, although it did lead them on their journey at points as well. But this flame, these flames that were above them were from the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit was coming in flames, this time not to go away again. The flames are gone because as you can see, there's no flames above my head, but the Holy Spirit still is here with me. He's in my heart, he's still here because I believe and trust that Jesus is my Lord and Savior. And so the Holy Spirit helps me. Do you remember we, I said we needed the Holy Spirit? Well, just like these guys all way, 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 way back had the Holy Spirit come for the first time and help them to tell people about God. Holy Spirit helps me too. Helps me to tell people about God's kingdom and tells, helps me to tell people about Jesus and about the wonderful hope and excitement and anticipation that I have. You see, sometimes that can be kind of scary because I don't want to go up to tell people about it, but I'm so excited that I do want to share Jesus with my friends, that I do want to tell them about the wonderful things that he has done and about the amazing, amazing, amazing kingdom of God. Oh, it's just so exciting and I really want to tell more people because I really want them to be able to come into friendship with Jesus too, so that they too will be in God's kingdom, in God's big family. And so the Holy Spirit helps me, helps calm my nerves, helps give me confidence and strength, and helps me to tell people about God's kingdom too. Just like here in the book of Acts, we see that the Holy Spirit helped people, helped them to tell others about the kingdom of God. Boys and girls, that's not just for them and it's not just for me, it's not just for grown-ups, it's something you can do too. Because if you believe in Jesus, if you've asked him to forgive your sins, then the Holy Spirit lives in you too. The Holy Spirit can help you too to tell people about Jesus, about the Son of God, about his kingdom, about his place and about the excitement and hope that we can have. That's just really, really, really exciting and it definitely makes me feel a lot better about telling people about Jesus because I know the Holy Spirit is with me, guiding me, helping me, and giving me the words to say when I don't really know what to say. So maybe this week you could think of one person that you could talk to about Jesus and about the hope that you have, about the fact that you're Jesus' friend, the fact that Jesus forgives our sins and that we want to tell others about him. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take a short look at a memory verse. It's got a very fancy name. It's called the Great Commission, but it's where Jesus told his people to go and tell others about him. So we're going to look at that. And then we're going to do a short craft. We're going to make crowns of fire, just like the fire, the Holy Spirit came. We're going to make little headbands. So you'll need either some colored card or just some paper and some markers and then some scissors and some tape. So. All right, so this week our Bible verse is from Matthew 28 and it's verses 19 and 20. It's called the Great Commission because it's when Jesus told his disciples to go and tell everybody about him and about God the Father and God's big kingdom. So let's read through it and then you can pause the video, go over it a couple of times, maybe even make up some actions to go with it because it is a great first for making up actions. Are you ready? One, two, three. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. What a wonderful command that Jesus gives us and what a wonderful encouragement for us to go and tell other people about him. Now, let's look at our craft. So for this craft, you're gonna need some paper. I've got some yellow and some orange, but if you don't have those, you can just use markers. Then I've got some two strips of paper that fit around my head some sellotape, some glue, a pencil and some scissors. So first what you're going to do is you're going to take your pencil, you're going to draw some flame shapes. Now I actually did this earlier. So you draw some flame shapes in different sizes and then what you're going to do is you are going to take your glue and you're just going to turn them over and you're going to stick them on 
in layers so that they create a really big flame. Just like when the Holy Spirit appeared as flames above their heads. So just like this. I prepped mine earlier. Then you're going to take your tape and find the end of it, which is always just a little bit tricky. So you might need an adult to help you with this. Take a piece of tape and stick the two sides together here. And then you're going to take your flame and you're actually going to tape along the bottom here so that it connects to the headband. Okay, so take a longer piece of tape, stick it on the back, then pick it up and we are going to stick that over. You can use glue if you have glue, maybe you don't have tape. I just find that the tape helps it to stick a little bit better. And then you take the other side, stick it together as well, just along here with a piece of tape. And then you have got a headband, a fiery headband that you can wear. There we go. There we go. Now you've got your flaming headband. Just make sure that your strips of paper here are big enough for your head. You will need to let it dry um, for a little while, but then you can wear that and maybe even say your memory verse with it on. Thanks for watching guys.